In this video, I'm going to be talking about the autism test that you can take online to see if you are on the spectrum fast. Coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan. I have autism, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia, and I make weekly content on autism and mental health. So if you're new around here and you wanna learn more, remember to hit that subscribe button by clicking the notification bell. And also, if you're watching over on Facebook, make sure to hit that like and follow button and you'll see daily videos from me. Okay guys, in this video, I'm gonna be discussing a test that you can do online, an autism test, that will show you and highlight to you how far on the spectrum it presumes you are going forward to get an official diagnosis. I found this one to be one of the most um, interesting ones. It's the fastest one that gives you uh, quite a detailed uh, feedback and I love that. So to me, it's one of the fastest ones that um, helps you get real answers and, and, and a an overview very quickly, but it's very accurate uh, to what I can understand from it. Okay guys, so before I get into the video specifically, I like to ask you guys to ask me questions on Instagram and then I'll read them out and you'll be featured in a video just like this. So if you want a chance at being read out in a comment just like this, make sure to go over to Instagram, give me a follow and turn on the notifications. Okay, the first comment here is from Zachary.j.official and they said, where do you see your channel in five years? What's the dream? Uh, five years from now, I'd love to see my channel with like a million subscribers. I don't know if that's even possible, but if it was, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Maybe? Okay, so the next question here is from Jess.Reinhardt, uh, and they said, um, how do you deal with anxiety in public? Do you take anything for anxiety? I do have anxiety medication that when I'm like traveling and I'm in, in social situations, I could take it if things start getting a bit kind of crazy, but usually I use breathing techniques. I take um, headphones with me so I can block out some sound. And I also take sunglasses wherever I go. So I'm always wearing a pair of sunglasses. One of the interesting things is that I take myself out of a situation which could go a bit upside down. Right, the last question here is from Emmy Shikawa. And they said, do you think it's important to get diagnosed? Absolutely, I think uh, having a diagnosis of an autism spectrum disorder, like an official diagnosis, is very important because it gives you access to help and support that maybe you wouldn't even have access to because of the fact that you weren't officially diagnosed. And if you're not officially diagnosed, then you may be left out of the legal requirements to access support or help where you may actually definitely need it. So yeah, I think it's important. Okay guys, so autism test. Like this is an interesting uh, one to do. So let's put this out there and this is an official statement. This test is not an official diagnosis. So taking this test doesn't mean that you're 100% on the spectrum or that you have been officially diagnosed. What this test does is it gives you a, an overview and an indicator to say that you may be on a spectrum, almost like a highlighting certain characteristics and traits of somebody on the spectrum so that then you can go forward and decide if you want to pursue a, an official diagnosis or speak to a doctor or whatever the steps that you want to take are. I did an entire uh, playlist uh, with downloads. It's kind of like a step-by-step -step guide of how to get an autism diagnosis. And I will leave that link in a card above here and also in the description below, uh, underneath the description of this video, uh, go down and you'll see um, how to get an autism diagnosis three part series. There's three videos on it. It comes with three PDF downloads as well, like check sheets and stuff. Highly useful for anybody who wants to go forward and do an official diagnosis. Guys, if you have anything to add about an autism test, if you found any other websites that give kind of overviews and other things about autism tests, make sure to leave me a comment in the comment section below because I'm sure that other people watching these videos would really enjoy that. So how they test for autism, there's a few different ways. Like you do have your typical one where you're stacking blocks like you've seen in the thumbnail here. You know, you, you stack blocks or you do like puzzles or you, you work stuff out and you figure stuff out. They want to know how your brain works. Then they do another one where they give you like a personal interview. And then they, they do one called the AQ test, which is an uh, autism um, coaching uh, uh, test, kind of like an IQ test, but it's an AQ test for specifically for autism, not just intellect. So this is kind of like the main principle of how they deep dive diagnose. So when I went through my diagnosis process, I did two of these tests. I did one with one doctor or nurse or psycho psychologist, psychiatrist, and then I did another set with an autism specialist. It's quite interesting actually that in terms of um, an autism diagnosis, you have to maybe have two or three different interviews or, or or actual kind of like appointments with the, the people who will be diagnosing you because it's a fascinating process. Now, this test that I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna show you a little clip of it right now so that you can see uh, what I mean by the fact that like, you know, it, it's basically 
uh, like an IQ test, you'd have basically, you'd have a list of things to go through. Um, like you can see here now it's question one, question two, and it has like a thing here. It says, you know, often true, sometimes true, rarely true, never. And they ask you specific questions. So you, you get to answer. So, you know, uh, loud noises um, and, and smells and stuff, do they make you feel pain? And then you can answer it honestly, you know, uh, often, sometimes true, rarely true, blah, blah, blah. So I took this specific test to see how well it would actually work. So I'm just going to pull up uh, what they said about me and my percentage and how this actually ranks basically. So they told me from my one that, um, so if your um, percentage is like 52% or higher um, after answering more than 12 questions, you should uh, show that you may be possibly um, experiencing autism spectrum disorder, you know, you may actually be on the on the spectrum. Um, it says, please also consider seeing a healthcare professional um, and that uh, some of the answers are kind of, you know, could be ambiguous and stuff like that. Um, so my score on this one specifically was 87%, which is super high. Um, and it was similar to the one that I initially did and similar to the one I did in my diagnosis process. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're going through, you fill out this um, like 12 question form or whatever, how many questions it is. Then you press like submit. It calculates where you would be um, like a neurotypical brain versus a neurodiverse brain, like an autism spectrum condition. And then it kind of puts you somewhere along there and gives you a percentage. This is why I got like an 87%, somebody else could get like 90 to 100%. And it's very interesting because it gives you that kind of somewhere on that marker where you fall. Now, what I find fascinating about this is you could probably take these results as a kind of uh, introduction to go see a doctor and say, hey, I did this online because I was feeling a bit like, you know, I feel like this, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you want to go for uh, an official formal diagnosis. Can they offer you a referral? This is what I would do. I didn't know about this test before I was officially diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, but this is something that I would have done, you know, retrospectively using this test. Now, before going to make an official diagnosis, obviously there are a bunch of different things. Again, I detail everything from like the before the diagnosis process, during the diagnosis process and after in that playlist down below. So please make sure you check that out because it's vitally important. Now, the autism test isn't designed to uh, to counter every single person's specific individual needs. This is just kind of like a crude overview. It works for most people who are on the spectrum and it will highlight that you are on the spectrum. Like for me, you know, you saw it was like an 87%. So it did highlight for me where I was on the spectrum and, and that I am on the spectrum. But I would say that we have to bear in mind that not every single person who is on the spectrum or an autistic person will fit into these specific questions on this specific website. So I won't be alarmed if you are on the spectrum and you're watching this video because you're a fan of mine or you come to these videos regularly and you go and take this test and the test produces results that say that you are not on the spectrum. It's not a huge issue. It's nothing to take personally. It's only because, again, like I said, we are all individuals. We all got individual personalities, right? I mean, we all do our own stuff. And so, like, I think maybe sometimes those can get kind of like bogged down. You know, people get bogged down with like, oh, this stereotypical bog standard test says that this is this and it's not that. So don't worry about those things. Guys, shout out to my merch. If you're interested in getting any of my merch here and my hat, which is the Keep Being Awesome hat, make sure to check out the link underneath the video. There's like a carousel and you can buy directly from YouTube, which is amazing. So if you want to support this channel, do that. So that being said, this is why testing for autism can't just be done with an AQ test like this one online. It has to be done as part of a process where you do different things. You have interviews, you do these tests and you do kind of like uh, an intelligence quota. They also tested me for ADHD and OCD when I was doing my uh, formal diagnosis, which was amazing. And, and I'm so proud and glad that they did that because then I was able to kind of figure out what other specific needs I had and things like that. And so those things are very, very important. So bear that in mind when you're wanting to do those things. And personally for me, when I was going through the diagnosis process, it was actually quite interesting. My score from the AQ test I did at home matched the one that I did with the psychologist and psychiatrist. But the interesting thing is, I guess, what they're going to do is they're going to take the AQ test score for the autism test. They're also going to take your like individual kind of interview test into uh, account. And they're also going to take the other quotients of the tests that they do when they are diagnosing you officially. So this is something to bear in mind. Again, this is just a crude test. I think it's a very fast and effective way that you can kind of highlight it to yourself. So this is where I would use this test. If you are somebody who has a child who you potentially could be on the spectrum or a partner or a loved one or a 
friend or a family member or a work colleague and you think, hey, maybe they're on the spectrum, why don't you get them to try out this test? And then it will give you some kind of indication to, if you're thinking, if you're on the fence thinking, oh, should I take, should I take them to see a specialist? So I ask for a referral, am I gonna do this, am I gonna do that? Why don't you take, get them to do this test, see if they respond to it in a way where, uh, you know, it gives you a high score, uh, and then maybe take them to see a specialist. That's why I would feel like that's how it could be used. But also bear in mind that if they're displaying traits and, uh, and characteristics of people on the spectrum, but they don't score high on this specific quotient, I wouldn't read too much into it. I would just say that like maybe they are, you know, some of the more uh, individual people who need specific help from specialists. And that would be where you go and just make that appointment and you go see them anyway. So this video is designed to help people. If you think that this video is able to help somebody, please share it on somebody's social media platform. It would be super amazing if you could do that. I would love that. Okay guys, so I actually do other videos on here. I show how I live my daily life with Asperger's syndrome and OCD and Asperger's syndrome is autism. It's just that that's what my diagnosis was. So I'm stuck in that kind of rhetoric. So I also have like ADHD and OCD and a dyslexia and all this stuff kind of comes into play and it impacts my life in uh, an interesting way. I do a secret vlog, which nobody else has access to. Only the people who join my YouTube membership plan, which is like $4.99 a month, I think, but you get access to um, any PDF documents that I I want to create and share on my website, but you guys get them for free. And also a weekly vlog from me, which is personal behind the scenes. So everything I do here and it's completely available to you guys. If you are on the members uh, team, we actually have 30 members right now, which is amazing. And it's a super awesome family. I love each and every one of you guys so much for supporting this channel. And this is what it does. It helps support this channel. So if you'd like to support me and help this channel, please check that out below. The link is below in the description and uh, yeah, it'd just be amazing. Okay guys, so on to the next video. I will see you guys next time in another video and I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I'll see you next time guys, peace.